Hur tänker Vladimir Putin? Ja, en som har fördjupat sig i den ryska presidentens person är journalisten och författaren Marsha Gessen som nyligen lämnade Ryssland på grund av landets anti lagar För några år sedan kom hon ut med boken Mannen utan ansikte. En djupt kritisk betraktelse över Putin. Och när hon var här hos oss lite tidigare kväll så frågade henne vad som skulle kunna få presidenten att backa i Ukraina-krisen. Nothing. He is not going to sit down to negotiate, and he is not going to back down. And I think that if the West understands that, it will make the choice at once harder and 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 easier to make, because there is nothing that will work strategically. If we go through the three options, uh, which are basically doing nothing, uh, or imposing economic sanctions or military intervention, we'll see how nothing will work. If the West does nothing. Which is already not an option because it's doing something. But if the West does nothing, then uh, Putin's view of the West as ineffectual, as uh, ridiculous, will simply be confirmed, and he will move forward emboldened. If sanctions are imposed, if they're really effective economic sanctions, uh, which they should be if they're imposed, You're then about the... trade sanctions. I'm talking about trade sanctions. I'm, I'm talking about uh, really kicking Russia out of uh, the, uh, the Western economies. You know, not a little bit at a time, uh, but really doing it and um, and divesting. Um, that means th uh, that will have a huge impact on the Russian economy. I mean, it all, it's already being impacted by what has happened. But uh, as as the economy slows down faster. Putin will have to mobilize it further. Russia already has a mobilization economy. He's already spending no money on education or social services. If he's asking people to take on even more hardships, he will have to escalate the war effort. So again, we see es escalation as a result. Mm. And if there's a military effort, then of course he will mobilize the population mm. uh, for the military effort. I mean that's not on the table, but if if it were, uh, and and it, again it would lead to escalation. So every option leads to escalation, which means basically the West has to decide what's the right thing to do. Mm. They all work the same way. What's the morally right thing to do? The morally right thing to do is to stop dealing with the, with Russia, to stop dealing with Putin, to treat Russia as the pariah state that he has turned it into. Mm. Okay, who is Vladimir Putin? Vladimir Putin is the president of the Russian Federation. Uh, he plans to be the president of the Russian Federation for life. He is a former KGB agent who believes that the worst thing that ever happened was that uh, the Soviet Union collapsed. But furthermore, that he was personally betrayed by the people who allowed the Soviet Union to be dissembled into pieces and who also didn't intervene when he, being stationed in Germany, was faced with German protesters. So he thinks protesters should be put down, uh, traitors should be punished, and some lands should be returned to Russia. Not necessarily. Uh, he doesn't have the, the, uh, the plan to recreate the Soviet Union. But he really does feel that uh, the lands on which Russians live in the former Soviet territories are Russian, he also has, at this point, and this is a new thing, this is something that has appeared in the last year or two, he feels he has a civilizational mission. The, the new Russian empire will be built on this idea of traditional values, of standing up to the West, of holding back the scourge of tolerance that he sees coming in from the West, and, uh, and will gather lands that way. So he's a man on a mission, that, and he thinks this is going to be his legacy. Mm -hmm. What kind of a leader would he like to be seen as in the West? He wants to be seen as strong. He wants to be seen as frightening. He wants to be seen as someone to be reckoned with. He has a great big personal grudge against the West for not consulting with Russia. Most importantly on Kosovo in 1999, when, Russia, when there wasn't even a show made of consulting with Russia when NATO began uh, bombing Kosovo, which is in Russia's backyard and where fellow Eastern Orthodox Slavs live uh, in, in Yugoslavia. But um, also the expansion of NATO in 2007, when again Russia didn't know about this, uh, it seemed to happen overnight. So he feels that Russia hasn't been taken seriously enough. He wants to avenge Russia. He's avenging Russia by invading Crimea, uh, among other things. And he wants to be seen as somebody who can never be discounted again. Mm -hmm. Now we see front pages in international press where, where Putin, a bare-breasted Putin, is riding a tank. Does he care about what picture 
uh, or how he's portrayed it in, in, in the West? Um, I think he doesn't know how he's portrayed in the uh -huh, West. He doesn't know. He, um, well, he doesn't use the internet. He doesn't. He relies on his uh, small circle of people to supply with him, with him with information. Like any dictator, and his has been in power, think about it, he's been in power for more than 14 years, almost 15 years. So it's been a long time that he's been in this bubble watching his own television, which parrots things that he says back to him. And he likes that. He's not watching Western television. He's not reading Western newspapers. And his minions are not telling him the things that are being said about him in the West. And he, he doesn't even know about you. You wrote a book about him. <laughs> yes, that's, uh, that's one of the funniest details of my personal biography, is that I had a meeting with Putin after my extremely critical biography of him came out in 20 languages. And he didn't know about the book because no one wants to tell him about it. A few years ago, you predicted his fall. <laughs> yes, well, I have lived to regret that. Um, I, I can try to save the situation by saying that, um, that I was right that he was entering a new stage. Of his, he was. Uh, he was. I mean, this is what we've been seeing for the last two years is a completely different way of ruling Russia. It's not a different Putin. You know, it's very much the same person, but it's, it's the same person who's, who's mad, who's decided to act, who's decided to crack down, who's decided to be as aggressive as he's always wanted to be. It began actually with the arrest of Pussy Riot uh, just over two years ago. And think about it, two years ago there weren't Russians serving jail time for peaceful protest. Now we're used to this idea. In the two years since Pussy Riot were arrested, uh, we're used to the idea that this happens in Russia. It's a different country that he has built over the last two years, an extremely repressive one and an extremely dangerous one to the rest of the world. Masha Gessen, thank you very much for coming here. Thank you for having me. Masha Gessen, rysk-amerikansk journalist och författare.